Yeah, it's been a month now. Yep. Any change in opinion uh, in, in how things went as opposed to right after the fight? I mean, I know it was disappointing, but if you look back on it now and, and pull all the positives out of it? Yeah, you know, uh, in my mind, uh, I won the fight, uh, but uh, I didn't do enough to to win the belt because, um, you know, he's a great guy and a uh, great fighter, so, you know, I have to do more and I will do more in the next fight so I can fight him again. What about the things that, that, you know, that Dana said to you right afterwards about, you know, you didn't really lose this fight, you, you were going to come out a winner in this thing. How long did it take for that kind of stuff to, to kind of set in with you? I mean, I'm sure you weren't looking at it that way right at that moment. No, uh, I've been thinking a lot and, you know, uh, uh, I learned a lot from that fight and, uh, I'm, a, I'm a another fighter today. Uh, I haven't really watched the fight yet. Uh, I need to do that too and break it down and go through details and see what I did did bad and what I did good. So why haven't you watched it yet? No, it's just too hard for me. It's uh, then I have to like I haven't really you know it's it's it will be it's it's not my thing really to, to it's too hard for me to watch the fight. Uh, but uh, I will do it. I will go down sit down with my team and watch it again and. And break it down in details. Has this fight changed anything in your life regarding popularity and whatnot? I mean, you've been a popular fighter in Europe before, but uh, yeah, has it changed anything in the U.S. for you? Yes, absolutely. I'm in another position today in my career, and uh, I'm feeling great, feeling comfortable where I'm at. Felt much better if I had a belt around my waist, but uh, I will have it soon enough. There are, th there are three po opponents being tentatively named for you next. You've got Cormier coming down to 205. You have the, 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 the gentleman you were supposed to fight in Sweden, but un unfortunately you got injured. And then you've got John Jones as well. W do any of those, is, is it John Jones you want next, and is that simply for the title, or are any of those fights interesting for you for other reasons? No, in my mind it's just John Jones right now. I, I don't have any scheduled opponent. I don't know where I'm fighting yet. Uh, so, still in my mind, it's John Jones. And but as soon as as soon as I have another opponent, my focus is going to be at that opponent 100%, and uh, I'll, I will beat him, and I'm going to get my next shot. I hope. So there are also rumors that you know certainly Cormier has said that he wants to fight you in the States. John Jones doesn't seem too keen on fighting you in Europe. Do you do you think that fighting in Europe is a huge advantage to you? And now that you fought Jones in the States, is it his turn to come here or come to Sweden perhaps and fight you in your own hometown? That would be that would be awesome if that were possible. Uh, I think I'm thinking the fight if I fought John Jones the fight would be in the US. But you know it's I think where, wherever I'm fighting uh, I have great support everywhere and uh, you know it's it's just that's just the way it are. It's, if I can fight in Europe or in, or in Sweden, that would be just awesome. It, it will be the best thing I've done in my life so far is fighting in my hometown. And uh, if I could do that again against the champ, that would be a dream come true. Let's say Glover Teixeira beats John Jones in this fight they have coming up. What would be your favorite option after that? Fight for the title against Teixeira or a rematch against Jones to you know make up for the last fight? Well, that's a very tricky, tricky question. Uh, I want the belt, of course. Uh, that's 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 why I'm doing this. The, uh, the belt is is the, the the proof that you're number one, and I want to be the number one. Uh, so, but um, at the same time, I want the fight with John. So, I, I, let's take that question. If that happened, let's take that question then. But uh, I can't really give you an answer. <laughs> Gustafsson, uh, we are in Manchester now, so uh, what do you think about events uh, in Europe, uh, in England, in uh, Manchester? Uh, it's a good idea? It's a very good, it's a, it's a very good idea. It's uh, the, the future looking bright uh, for the European uh, MMA scene and it's just going to get better. Uh, I hope they have. I hope they're gonna have a lot of shows here in the Europe and, and around Europe. And I just think it's it's awesome. I, lo I love to be here. I love to be around here. And uh, you know. And uh, so yeah, I hope the future looking great. And the second question: I, I'm from Poland. Uh, we will see Piotr Kanan uh, tomorrow uh, in Octagon. Uh, do you know something uh, Polish MMA, or maybe do you know uh, Piotr Kalman? No, I don't. But uh, uh, or maybe his opponent, Ali Akin, from USA. Uh, no, I'm, I don't know that much about that fight. But uh, I'm, I'm, when every European fighter fights, I'm very stoked. Uh, it's going to be a great card, and I can't wait for tomorrow fights and uh, and see see the results.
Speaking of shows in Europe, a couple of weeks back there wasn't a show in Sweden scheduled for next year now. A couple of days ago uh, it was said that there might be another show in Sweden next year. Do you know anything about that? Because it is yeah, pretty obvious that if they do a show in Sweden, you would be headlining it. Yeah, uh, I don't know either that much. Uh, how we, if they're gonna have a show or not? Uh, if they will have a show, I hope I can headline it, and and I, and, I, and I really hope uh, I really hope uh, they they come to Sweden. Uh, let, let's see, let's see. I'm just I'm fighting wherever they, they put me, and uh, and I'm back in training, and uh, I'm feeling great, feeling great from the fight, and I'm just ready to go. You didn't walk out of the fight with any injuries at all. No, I was just bruised up, bruised up, and uh, that was it. Uh, it seems like Daniel Cormier is probably the guy that you're going to draw. Do you feel that uh, the fact that he's coming from heavyweight, moving pr probably into a number one contenders fight right away, is that fair? Uh, DC has been, uh, he's been very successful, and he's, he's, be, he's been winning all his fights, and uh, yeah, you know, I think I think he's he is the, in that position that he. He, he could do that, and uh, you know, if if that would be the case, if 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 I'm planning to fight him, you know, I'm I'm very looking forward to that. How do you feel you match up with him if that is the fight? Uh, I, f I think I'm matched up very well with him. So if that will happen, I'm then I'm I'm very excited to to to, to, to fight fight him. There were some rumors about a potential split with Alliance, and can you put those to bed now? Can you say categorically no that I'm still going to be training at Alliance as and when? Because I know you split your training up. W w were they unfounded rumors? Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't true at all. Uh, I'm a part of uh, the team Alliance in San Diego, and I will always be that. Uh, they're a great team, great coaches, great athletes, and uh, and uh, so. But but the thing is, I'm I'm, I'm based in Sweden, training in Sweden full time. Uh, at the, my gym all Stars training center and uh, and what I do I go back and forth and that what I, that's what I'm going to continue doing that's how, that, you know I get the best things from from both worlds so for, uh, you know so you know that, that's I'm still part of the, the team so do you have any idea where that came from was that just uh, was that just one of us a journalist reading into something or do you have any idea where that rumor came from uh, no no I haven't no I, I, what I said is I said that uh, if I would possibly fight in Sweden I would do my whole camp in Sweden, so that's what I've said, and that's that's very logical to me, you know, because uh, I don't want to have the jet lag and you know, and bringing in guys instead from Team Alliance, and you know, they, it doesn't matter where I do my camps, you know, the uh, head coach Eric Del Fierro and, and Andreas Michael, they're my coaches, and uh, and they will always be in my corner, and they will always uh, my head coach Andreas Michael though, uh, and he, he he's um, he has daily contact with uh, Eric Del Fierro, at head coach of the Team Alliance, and they they work together and. Those two coaching with each other, it's uh, it's it's a very it's a winning concept. What will it take to have a full camp in Stockholm for your fight? Yeah, we're gonna probably bring in guys, and in, in, in that if that is the case, and uh, and uh, make make the make the camp uh, at home. So I've done it before, and I can do it again. So. Maybe again. Uh, that's very possible. Yeah, I have uh, contact with him uh, a lot. We talk, uh, we talk a lot with each other, and uh, he'll probably come in and uh, a few other guys. Oh, I can't wait to see that fight. Uh, it's, it's a it's a short notice fight for Nico, and he moving up one weight class. But that guy, he's a he's a beast. He trains hard every day, and he's one of my main sparring partners. And he's you know he's just getting better and better, and he's looking great. So he's gonna win tomorrow. He's gonna win tomorrow for sure. Before the fight, you, uh, you guys were fairly respectful of each other, but you did say that you felt like John was a little bit arrogant at times. <coughs> Since the fight, he's been pretty. Uh, he, he complimented you on how you fought. Um, seems like you guys are sort of cool. I mean, have, have your feelings on him changed at all? Or? Uh, yeah, no. You know, we you know we're not we're not best friends. <laughs> we're probably never gonna be. Uh, we're competition and. Uh, and uh, you know that, that that's it. You know I still have my opinions and so on. He's a great fighter. He's a great guy. I don't know him at all. Uh, but um, it was just the way he he. That was just uh, a, a, that face I got when we had the Euro the tour, world tour, and so on. Uh, and that was just an opinion I had. And uh, but you know I don't know him, so I can't say anything. You know.
of What's Canada. What's stuff? Because obviously you were <coughs> an underdog and you surprised a lot of people making it as close as you did and a lot of people thought you actually won as well. What's the feedback you've gotten from people since uh, you returned home? It's just been, been great feedback. Um, you know, great feedback from fans, very good media, uh, and uh, it's, it's, been, it's been just great. It's been just great. Uh, I got, a, got a tons of support from everywhere, just not Sweden and Europe, from ev the whole world, and uh, that's, that means a lot to me. And uh, yeah, so. We just saw Kane and Junior fight for the third time. You and John are both still young, regardless of what happens with, with him and Teixeira, do you feel like this is something you guys may fight three times or more yourself? Yeah, we we're gonna fight a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You think this is the next big rivalry in, in UFC history? Uh, yeah, I don't know about rivalry, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be him and me at the end. How many times, would you, if you were guessing, how many times would you say you'll fight him? I don't know, five or six. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see what happens. <laughs> You, MMA in this country is still a fledgling, fledgling sport. It's still growing, and I think across Europe it's the same thing. UFC is the big brand. As a fighter, do you th and working with guys who are coming up, do you think perhaps the UFC need to look at sort of some of the grassroots levels in the new markets they're coming into? And is is there a way that they might be able to help improve the grassroots in countries like England or Sweden or? Uh, can you repeat the question now? Yeah, in this country, and certainly I think around Europe, MMA is still a fledgling sport. It's still quite new. A lot of people aren't sort of as clued up on it as perhaps in the States or Brazil. Do you think the UFC should start working with some of the grassroots MMA levels in order to help raise the profile of the sport in Europe and especially the UK? Do you think that would help? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, of course it would. But I still think that they're doing a great job, you know, with the media. They they make sure people know what it is, and that's the good part. You know, they is they just not, you know, they just don't, uh, you know, uh, do an event and that's it. You know, it's a lot of media attention, meeting the fans, uh, you know, with everything. So I think they're doing a great job, and uh, it's just a matter of time. You know, England, it, you know, it's 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 huge here and uh, in Europe too, and it's just getting bigger. So let's see how the future looks. And how important is that interaction for you as a fighter, especially with the fans, and uh, how? You know, how good does that make you feel and how important is it to you as part of your career? Fans mean everything to a fighter, uh, for an athlete uh, overall. Uh, it's, it makes us push harder, makes us, you know, want to win and uh, just, you know, without the fans I wouldn't be standing here. So it, it means everything. It goes hand in hand. What did you say? <laughs> I was asking about the st statistics from the John Jones game. It was for his, um, it was win for John Jones at first, but then the change oh, okay. and yeah. he's now the winner. Right for significant strikes. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I don't know nothing about it. I've seen it. Uh, I don't know what, it, what the background is and and how, and how they and, and how it came up. But um, you know, it, all, all that doesn't really matter to me right now because I don't. Ha you know, uh, we already had a fight and I lost, and that's the way it's gonna be. I can only change. I can only change that if I fight again uh, and if I win, and and I will win. So. Do you see yourself uh, meeting Cormier or do you want to meet someone else? Um, what do you see is going to be for your chances to meet John Jones again? What's the best for you? Well, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just fighting whoever they give me. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm just really hope and believe that, that who I'm fighting and if I beat him, uh, I'll, I'll fight Jones next. And uh, that's, what I'm that's what I believe. Do you want to uh, have a fight next in Sweden or do you see yourself having a game in the States? Uh, what do you prefer? Uh, I prefer at home. That would be great if I could fight at home. Uh, but uh, whatever they want me to fight, I fight. It uh, doesn't matter. I always have good support everywhere. And, uh, and like in Toronto last time, I don't know how many Swedes and European he came out. A hundred. So it's, I'm just comfortable where am I, where am I, wherever I'm fighting. So. Keeping in mind how close that fight against Jones was and how competitive it was, what do you feel you have to do differently in a second or maybe third, fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever matchup uh, to win those fights? Just push harder. You just need to push harder in the fight and uh, stay in busy and do everything that I did good even better. So, last couple of minutes, guys. 
So, some people have said that that's the greatest fight though, of all time. It's the greatest fight they've ever seen. I mean, does that help soften the blow of losing? Uh, yeah, uh, a little bit. Um, everything that came with that fight is just, it's just a bonus for me. It's, it's you know, I'm very comfortable in that position I'm at in my career right now, and it helped me. But um, you know, I, I still don't, I just still don't have the belt. So at the end of the day, I'm, I'm still very disappointed. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Appreciate that. Thank you.